Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to get you set up with MongoDB Atlas. Now first off, what is MongoDB Atlas? It's basically a cloud instance of MongoDB that we can access from anywhere. MongoDB has a wonderful um, local package that you can install and run on your own computer if you want. That's, it's entirely free and you can use it to your heart's content. However, the way that the world is going, more and more and more databases are being stored in the cloud. They're not being stored locally. So I thought it would be a better introduction to real-world, practical, hands-on um, stuff if we were to get you started with MongoDB Atlas. Now, it is free. They have a free tier, if you will, that allows you to set up different databases, different collections. It doesn't have any of the advanced features. It doesn't have uh, backup. It doesn't have a lot of stuff, basically. But it, it definitely is more than enough for our purposes. So to get started, just go to mongodb.com slash cloud slash atlas or just Google MongoDB Atlas. You'll get to this page. So we're going to start for free. And you can sign up with Google or you can fill it out here. I'm just going to sign up with Google. Be right back in a second after I've done so. All right, I signed in with Google and then for some reason it just kind of timed out, stalled for a minute. So I had to refresh the page. So if that happens to you, just hit refresh and it should be fine. And you'll get dropped off here. Now we want shared clusters because they're free. If you want, you can go ahead and start paying eight cents an hour or 56 bucks a month. I wouldn't recommend it until you really know what you're doing and you actually need that. We don't need any of this stuff. We don't need auto scaling. We don't need network isolation. We don't need performance metrics. We just want the very basic stuff for what we got going on. So create a shared cluster, choose your provider. I like AWS. Um, Virginia is the closest to me. Pick whichever one's closest to you. Um, all this, you got all these different options. The tier here is set for you pretty much, unless you want to start paying. I'm picking the M0 sandbox because it's free forever. Additional settings, select a version. I'm on 4.2. I recommend you kind of stick with whatever is the stable version, not the beta. And you can turn on um, backup, but it, it requires that you obviously jump up to another tier. We don't care about our backup because we're not storing any real data. We're, we're faking it. And you cluster name, you give it a name, you have to give it once. So I'm going to call this CS330. And then create cluster. It'll take a minute um, to actually create your cluster and everything. So I'm going to pause this and come back once I am done. All right, my cluster has finished being created. So right now, I don't have any collections in my cluster. You need collections as a table. They're basically a collection of data. So if, if I were going to do my comics one, I might have a collection of comics, and I might have another collection of users. So things like that. So let's go ahead and just play around. For now, I'm going to create a collection, because it says no collections right now. And I'm going to show you on, on the back end how you can create new collections and everything using your JavaScript. But for now, we're just kind of going to kind of play around. So we got collections, we have nothing in here now. So let's add my own data. Database name, we'll call it practice. And collection name, we'll call it cars. And now I have a new database with one collection inside of it called cars. What's cool about these clusters is that you can create multiple databases inside of them. So if you've got multiple projects going on at the same time, it does. You can have a different database for each one without having to change your clusters. So now I have cars, and right now cars has nothing in it. There are no documents inside. So let's insert one. It gives you by default an object ID, and that's pre-populated. And let's come up with a few things that we might need for a car. So let's do a make, and we'll call it my very first car, a Chevrolet. Then hit the plus, add field. It's going to be a model. Mine was a celebrity. If you want to Google that, that's a, a wonderful old man car that I had when I was 16 years old. We have a year, which we'll just do in 32. Um, it was a 1984, I believe. And then the color, that'll be a string, and it was silver. mileage. Uh, we'll make that another M32. I don't know, we'll call it 100,000. 
And then let's add a different data type. Needs repair, we'll call it. And this is going to be a Boolean of true, because it definitely needed repair. So if I look at this in JSON format, you can see this is how it's actually stored. It has an ID, where the OID is the key, and then the actual ID is there. It has a make, which is a string, a model, which is a string. You can see this is basically just JSON. It's got some of these um, dollar signs in front of it that makes it a little bit, that might be a little bit confusing for some people, but just think of it as JSON. It is JSON. That's how you'll, that's pretty much how you'll access it. So go ahead and insert that. And you can populate with your own data. I don't care. So now you have an object inside of your um, cars collection. You have one thing in there. It's, you have an ID and you can access it using this ID. This is a unique ID. You've got your make, your model, your year, your color, mileage, and needs repair. So that is how one way to add things to your database. It's obviously not a very good way unless you're just troubleshooting things, but that is one way you can add things to your database. The next thing I want to talk about is how you can connect to your database using your JavaScript. So we're going to go to database access right here. And the first thing we have to do is make a user. So let's add a new database user. You can do any of these things. I recommend just doing password first. You can choose to auto-generate a secure password, and actually that's what I'm going to do. So boom, a secure password. Then you click show, copy that password, and hide. Or you don't even have to show and hide. You just hit auto-generate and then hit copy. And now it's copied to your clipboard. Now, this is where you can um, set different privileges to that user. Users in the database are just like users on a computer. They can have read-write. They can be Atlas admin, which is basically they can add more people to this database. They can do anything on here. Read and write to any database, only read. Or you can grant specific privileges. We want to read and write to any database. So we're going to add that user. And now we have a user. It'll take it a minute to deploy those changes, but once it's done, we will have our user. While it's doing that, we can go ahead and start on the next thing. We're going to go to the network access, and we need to add IP address. Because by default, MongoDB is going to block any IP addresses trying to access your data, except for the ones that you give it permission to. So you have the option of allowing access from anywhere. I do not recommend this, because it will allow access from anywhere, and it, and it, it can cause bad things. For our purposes, it doesn't really matter um, because, again, you're not storing any sensitive data. Nobody really, it doesn't really matter if somebody jacks up your data if they manage to hack in. It's just not a good practice to get into. So you can just add your current IP address. That's useful if you are at home um, and you have the same IP address all the time. But if you are at work or at a library at Burger King or whatever, that's obviously not going to be very helpful because your IP address will change based on where you are. So... Um, you may, if, if that's your case, if you don't have um, internet at your house and you have to go to different places, or if you're constantly working in a lot of different places, you can either add a bunch of different IP addresses, or you can allow access from anywhere. For now, I'm just going to allow access from anywhere, and all that does just fills in 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which is um, code for basically every, any IP address. And then just hit confirm. And it will add that so that any IP, for in this case, or whatever IP you specifically chose, will be able to access your um, data. And then finally, we need to get what's called our connection stream. To do that, we come up to clusters, and you want to click on the connect button. Now, there are a few different ways to connect to your uh, MongoDB. You can do the shell, you can do the application, or you can do the compass. We're going to do the application. Connect your application using native drive. And basically, it's going to say, okay, what kind of driver are you going to use? There's a lot of different ones depending on what language um, you're writing in. Obviously, we are doing Node.js, but if you do decide one day to develop an app using C-sharp and .NET, there are drivers for that. Version, always do 3.6 or later. And then this is the connection string. And we're going to use this in the very next video to actually connect to our database and be able to get information from it and write information to it and so on and so forth. So go ahead and copy this and paste it somewhere that you can access it. So I'm just going to come over here into Gorm IDE, open up, where am I going, week 10, not week 9, week 10, comics, and actually I'm going to go ahead and, and show you a little trick. I hadn't planned on doing this yet, but what we're going to do is we're going to make a... Um, config.js file and we're going to put all of our um, usernames and passwords in there. That way we don't have to actually have our username and passwords hard-coded, which is not good practice. 
So we're going to CD into week 10, and then into Yelp comics, and then I'm going to touch config.js. All this is going to be is a single JavaScript object that we are going to export and then import into our app.js. So const, we'll call it data, equals an object, or we'll call it config. Const config equals an object, and then on this object, you can have um, obviously key value pairs like you always do. So we might call this database, or DB for short. DB is going to be an object. On there, we're going to have username, which is going to be a string, and password, which is going to be another string. So I'll go ahead and do the username, and then I'm going to copy and paste my password. No, you don't get to see it. And then down below, we have to do module.exports equals config. This line right here tells JavaScript, hey, take whatever I'm passing in, this config, and export it whenever I try and import this package. That's what you should export. So now that I'm done with that, I will save and close. And then inside app.js, let's just try this real quick, just to demonstrate. Const config equals require dot slash config. And the reason the dot slash is we're saying, hey, it's in the same directory. Don't look in node modules for config, look in the same directory. And then let's just console.log config dot db dot username whenever we start the server. So let's just do node app.js. There we go. We can see right here that it, it did the username correctly at console.log. That's how I know that it's working. So inside of our config, we're also going to put our connection string. So copy. We'll call it connection. Just paste it in there. Now there are a few things we have to fill in. I'm going to take the password, copy, and paste it over this, including the, the carrots, including the um, less than or greater than sign. Paste it in there. And then the DB name, we want to be cars. For now. We want it to be cars. We're going to change that later. So now I no longer need my password right there. Save. And when I want to connect, I can just connect with db.connection. Just to make our life a little bit easier when we go to do that. This is also very good practice to have a config.js and inside of your code just reference that config whenever you're using usernames, passwords, any type of sensitive data like that because when you start to back up your data, when you start to share your code and things like that, you don't want to have your usernames and passwords floating around hard-coded in. You want to have them imported from another file that you're not going to share. And I'll definitely show you how to um, use Git to share all your stuff and to exclude this from things you're sharing. In this video, we set up a MongoDB cluster. We created a database and a collection. So let's, if we look at our collections, you can see that we have a database called Practice, and we inside of there we have a cars collection, and inside of that collection we have one item that is my old crappy car, first car I ever got. We also went into our web application and created a config.js file. Let's go ahead and open that back up again. And all that is, is just a object that has um, sensitive data on it. So you, you can create, you do this as many times as you want. This is for the database. You might have another one for another application, for API key. It would be a good one, for example, something like that. So you could add as many things to that as you need. And then down at the bottom, you use module.exports to actually export that variable. And inside of your app.js, you just import it like everything else, the only difference is that you're not importing it from um, node modules, which is what this will do by default, by putting the dot slash in front. You say, hey, this is an actual file that I created, and it's in this, this directory. If you wanted to, you could create it in a directory above, or you could create it in another directory, secret stuff, 
like that, you can play around with the path. Mine just happens to be right there. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.